Welcome to the video guys. You might remember in the lead up to the general election last year and of course the four years of Brexit debacle we had to deal with after the referendum. The BBC are literally back at it again with underhand tactics on Newsnight where before getting an expert from the Sage group they decided to put one of their political commentators on there to push out their favoured narrative over the situation relating to the R number and the government releasing the lockdown restrictions. It was completely nonsensical and should never have been there. If you are having a Sage expert on the show within minutes there is no need for us to sit there and listen to two minutes of dribble from a political correspondent who, last I checked, is not an expert. I mean, it was rather funny afterwards though, because the expert, when speaking to Emily Matepiss, completely shut down her nonsense in trying to compare Germany to the United Kingdom, claiming Germany knew its R rate to the exact decimal point, which the expert quickly shuts down as complete fantasy. Well, that little stunt on Newsnight wasn't the only thing that the BBC got up to and is arguably far less important than what we have here, which is reported in the Express. BBC sparks outrage as it cuts short briefing while PM is outlining vital coronavirus advice. BBC One has outraged Britons across the country as the broadcasting giant cuts short the coronavirus briefing as the Prime Minister issued critical advice. Britons were left furious as their broadcast of the daily coronavirus briefing was cut short on BBC One. Outraged viewers took to Twitter to condemn the broadcasting giant. A furious viewer wrote, BBC One decided that everyone watching the Downing Street briefing needed to switch to BBC News so they could broadcast their own hacks comments. They literally got Laura Koonsberg on there to give her opinion rather than obviously listening to what the government and Boris Johnson himself had to say on the matter. Another added, this is why I switched from BBC News to Sky News years ago. Why have the BBC cut from the Downing Street briefing to give their own premature opinions about it? No thanks, that's not what I pay the licence fee for. And no, he is right, you don't pay the licence fee for that you pay the licence fee for them to brainwash you with their constant woke nonsense. That's what we're paying licence fees for, guys. Remember that. It's not for their honest, unbiased news coverage, that is for sure. One annoyed viewer questioned why the BBC felt the need to analyse the Prime Minister before the briefing was over. Because they don't want to hear what they got to say, they are literally just there to try and attack the government and use this as a little point scoring exercise. They've been doing it for weeks, but it seems they're getting more and more blatant as time progresses. And it has definitely been ramped up since Boris Johnson announced he was going to relax the restrictions. Likely because these news organisations have been seeing record figures over the last couple of weeks and months. When you have to remember obviously that before this situation the mainstream media was actually a dying medium getting less and less viewers each year. So maybe now Boris Johnson is planning to start opening up the country the media are shitting a brick because they know their viewing figures will go down once people start ignoring the fear that they are constantly pumping out because they they want everyone soiling themselves in fear. So you sit in your house and watch BBC News, Sky News, Channel 4. All of those mainstream media outlets that are now seeing record figures have literally an excuse now to pump out the fear. Another guy wrote on Twitter, What the hell is going on at the BBC? Halfway through the PM's briefing, Fiona Bruce interjects to seek the opinion of Laura Koonsberg. Why? Aren't the public bright enough to interpret the message? Well, I suppose it depends on who you consider the public as to that question, because if you happen to be on Twitter, then the chances are you don't know what the government's advice was and are sitting there rather baffled, much like these left-wing media shit weasels that we see here from the BBC. And in all honesty, pretty much all other media broadcasters who have run around saying that they don't understand the government's new lockdown rules.
Another Twitter user agreed and insisted the BBC should have continued the broadcasting to hear the government's experts on coronavirus, which is kind of obvious, but not what the BBC obviously want to do. Their editors have decided it's time to go to Laura Koonsberg so they can put their spin on what's being said rather than obviously letting people make their own minds up. The tweet read, what are the BBC doing? They have just cut broadcasting the daily briefing from Downing Street halfway through, only to be replaced by Fiona Bruce and the public asking for more clarity about the next stage. You couldn't make it up, why not just listen to the PM and the experts? Because then, obviously, the media can't spin the narrative that people don't understand. If they quickly switch from BBC One to BBC News, there is a good chance that a fair old portion of the viewers won't bother switching over and will just listen to what Fiona Bruce and the rest of the biased shit weasels will come out with on BBC One. These editors at the BBC are obviously not stupid. They know what they are doing. They are putting some decent spin on the situation so they can use it to their advantage. Boris Johnson has faced stern criticism for the government's latest coronavirus plans following his speech on Sunday evening. No, he's only faced criticism from the loony left and people who are too stupid to understand plain and simple English. Because you can't expect the government to micromanage your life. So Boris is trying to say the onus is on you to take care of yourself, which should have been the way it was anyway, and the rest of it is just talking a load of old nonsense that we don't really care about. But like I said at the beginning of the video, the BBC are back into their Brexit mode, this time using the coronavirus against the government. And we can also never forget the fact that the BBC over the last few weeks have essentially been the SNP's propaganda arm. I have seen far too many BBC love-ins with SNP MPs like Ian Blackford or Nicola Sturgeon. The same is also true for ITV and I expect Channel 4 and Channel 5. So guys, like I said, it is Brexit 2.0, but this is just the coronavirus instead. The BBC, it would seem, are back into the swing of being the biased broadcasting corporation. But on that note, guys, I am going to end the video there. Now, before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.